Good morning and welcome. Uh, glad that you guys are here. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Eric Colser. I serve as the pastor here at Center Point West. Uh, just wanted to uh, um, welcome everyone and then just to remind everybody, uh, we are so, so glad uh, that uh, we have uh, some gifted musicians here, that we have a rotation of three bands uh, for the next uh, several weeks uh, that's going to be leading us in worship. Uh, today is actually Jacob Kerr, who had been leading our students in worship uh, over this last year, his last day here. And so uh, um, at the very, very end, we're going to have a, a donut fellowship with uh, Northline. Uh, but again, uh, we're glad that you're here and we're glad that we're going to be able to to uh, uh, just worship our Lord uh, and then also honor and celebrate everything that he has done specifically through the curse. And so I'm going to ask you to stand up. I'm going to open up in prayer and then uh, let's worship the Lord. Uh, let's pray right now. Uh, Jesus, again, we thank you so much uh, for the opportunity on this uh, beautiful day, Lord, uh, to be able to come and glorify you, glorify your name, uh, make much out of you, Lord, uh, because you are uh, worthy of such praise, Lord. And uh, so as we sing out to you right now, we pray that you prepare our hearts, that you prepare our minds, uh, that you prepare our, our spirit as a whole, Lord, uh, to be able to hear from your word uh, and also to be able to live out what you communicate to us uh, through the rest of the week, Lord. Uh, God, uh, I know specifically with this uh, message and from the scripture that we're going to be studying, uh, even hearing an update from a beloved family in our church so that we can spend time applying what we are going to learn here today, Lord. Uh, God, again, this opportunity to be able to give back our praise and worship to you as you invest and speak and change us, Lord. Uh, let us never, ever take light or forget how important this is, Lord, uh, this time to you. And so we give you are all right now. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. shall be impossible your kingdom reigns unstoppable we'll shout your praise forevermore jesus our god unstoppable nothing shall be impossible your kingdom reigns unstoppable we'll shout your praise forevermore jesus our god unstoppable
unbelievable guy that you go go on and on impossible things in your name they shall be done
You can have a seat. Well, church, in a moment here, we're going to continue worship by hearing God's word. But before we do, um, I want to spend some time, uh, a few different things. Uh, first off, uh, when you walked in, you should receive the point. Uh, inside of it has uh, just uh, some announcements and some information about some events uh, that we'll be talking about at the very end of service. I uh, also want to remind you and encourage you uh, that if you scan that barcode off to the bottom right, uh, we use that as our online connect card. And so if you have any type of prayer request or if you're new, this is your first time visiting, and whether it's something of the message or you're interested about something uh, as a next step with our church, uh, we'd love to be able to answer any of those questions, contact you. Um, so again, you can be able to use that as your online connect card. And uh, also um, the, in the message, there's going to be actually a part uh, for you to respond that way and so kind of keep that uh handy for you well church um speaking of prayer uh we want to spend some time in a moment here praying for a beloved family uh, of ours in this church. Uh, many of you guys uh, know uh, Jake and Crystal Salcedo. Uh, they've been going to Center Point Church for uh, a long time. Uh, they've been here for, I think, about 10, 11 years or so uh, before West Campus started what's going to be seven years next month, and we'll be celebrating. Uh, they were a part of that, uh, launching from our East Campus. And again, as many of you guys know also, uh, in this past year, uh, they have five kids, and their youngest, Ava Jo, um, she found out that she had uh, leukemia. And so so they have been on a journey with that, uh, not only them, but again, their whole family and our church with them. Um, and uh, I asked them to, uh, knowing that the topic today was prayer, I asked them to be able to give a video update. They've actually been able to, when we were in the hotel in the summer, they were able to come uh, because of the season and with the chemo uh, that, that uh, their youngest was going through. But right now they're in the midst of what is the toughest trial of that. And so they're not going to be here. They're going to be watching online for a while, but knowing that the topic today was prayer, the importance, the power of it on our journey, our walk with the Lord. I asked them to give us a little longer update uh, for our church so they can be able to share exactly where they're at, their daughter's at, and so that we can spend some time right after you watch this video praying for them as a church family, and then also so you can continue to pray for them as they're in, again, the toughest season of their daughter's chemo, which is a two, three-year thing. God's been very gracious and good in many, many ways as they're going to share, but this is the toughest stage of it. And so, church, will you just kind of listen in um, and to their, their update and then their specific prayer requests? And in a moment here, I'm going to ask you to join me in prayer and then listen to God's word on the power and importance in it. So, Hey, family, how are you all? It's uh, been a long time since we've seen you guys. Um, for those of you who don't know us, we are Crystal and Jake Salcedo. Uh, we've been married 14 years. Uh, we have five beautiful children, ages 12, 11, 7, 6, and 4. Um, I, had to, I had to actually practice that. <laughs> um, we've lived in Lexington for 13 years, and we've gone to Center Point for 10, 11 of those years? Uh, 12 and a half years. 12 and a half years. Here we go. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, we wanted to give you all an update about our daughter, Ava Jo. She's our youngest, our four-year-old, and uh, she's been diagnosed with, uh, as of November of last year, she was diagnosed with leukemia, um, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, um, also known as ALL. And uh, <clears throat> from the beginning, we've had so many people comfort us and uh, saying things like, you know, that's the best cancer to have. Uh, it's the easiest to beat. And while it has the highest curability rate, um, it's kind of tough to hear. Uh, because imagine your child being sick with a fever or a cold and seeing how puny they are. And then imagine giving them medicine dose after dose and then continue giving them dose after dose, which makes them feel worse until they're immunocompromised. And um, all the while the doctors are saying that this is normal. Uh, and you start seeing them become sickly looking, gaunt. Uh, you start seeing their hair fall out clump by clump until there's just a few strands left. And then finally you get a break and then your child starts getting healthy again. And you start seeing them run and play and, and do things that normal kids are doing again and thinking that this is normal. And that's where we were about two months ago. Um, 
and Ava looked great. She was healthy and she, we were going on walks, taking the dogs on walks and everything. And she was eating healthy and she began growing her hair out again. And uh, we called it, her, we called them her feathers. And uh, you know, everybody in the family was touching her and, and kissing her head and everything because they were soft, little beautiful strands of brown hair. Um, and then we thought this was, this was the new normal <clears throat> and that wasn't true. Uh, it was a few weeks ago, we entered uh, Ava's current phase of treatment called uh, delayed intensification, uh, which means that she's progressively getting chemo dose after dose uh, over the course of 56 days, six different types of chemos, uh, chemotherapies, chemicals that are poisoning her body in specific ways to attempt to teach her cells not to replicate cancer cells. Um, and they're given to her through various means. The first being a port, which looks like a little Iron Man looking thing that gets surgically implanted in her four year old little chest. And there's a tiny catheter attached to it that goes into her blood vessel that uh, runs closest to her vein, or I mean, closest to her heart. And uh, through that way is one method. Another is through uh, pills, these little chemo pills that you can't touch with your bare hand we have to put a glove on to give it to her so that she can put this in her mouth. We can't touch it with our skin, but she's putting it in her mouth. And um, then we have to, we have another one uh, that is given through a, a syringe, a, a needle um, on top of her two other injections that she takes daily. And, uh, and then last is her intrathecal one, which is, uh, it's a spinal tap. And for those ladies who've had an epidural she gets this once, sometimes twice a month uh, into her little spine. She's four years old. Now we failed to mention the hospital stays for weeks, uh, the shorter overnight stays uh, in the middle of the week and then the weekly trips to the clinic, sometimes several times a week, um, waking her up to give her a shot uh, or to swallow a pill that she fights us with or, or give her a syringe of oral medication uh, to help curb the effects of the other medications that she's taking. Um, and we didn't mention the screaming fits of anxiety, um, her not wanting to be poked or tied to an IV pole because she's afraid of it being ripped from her chest. We didn't mention the stress that her brother and sisters go through. We didn't mention helping her walk, um, helping her open lids of sippy cups and helping her sit on a toilet or climb into bed. And uh, we didn't mention the possibilities of her having cognitive effects in the future or the possible issues of memory retention or the possibility of her not being able to bear a child when she's older. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are troubled. Psalm 6-2. So today, Ava has no immune system. She's lost half of, she's lost all of her hair again, um, including her eyebrows and yet our baby's smiling. She looks great, she looks healthy. She's not at full strength, but she's playing with her siblings. She swings on the swing set. She plays with her dogs, with her dolls and just watch her be the beautiful child that she is. As of April of this year, she's officially in remission. There are no cancer cells in her body, yet she still has to undergo treatment and we have another 14 months to go. From the beginning of this, Crystal and I have prepared our hearts for the worst case scenario. We've also considered the best case scenario. Um, and there are strong emotional reactions that we can take. Uh, one of them is to blame God. The other, we can dismiss him. Or the other, we can put our whole weight on him, um, believing that he will heal Ava. And simply because he can do it. Because it's in his power. And then there's the rational side that says... Ava can contract some sort of fungal infection or bacterial infection or any other multitude of diseases or the strongest possibility, which is her cancer relapsing. The reality of this brings us to the true position as humans um, and as parents that we are completely helpless. And that's okay because we know that God, the God that we serve is greater than anything else that we can comprehend even if that means we comprehend the worst case scenarios. Our Ava is wonderfully and fearfully created to serve a purpose. 
and that we know for a fact. Us as her parents and you as her church family, we're all here to help her realize that potential. <clears throat> so with Eric asking us to give you an update today, we wanted to take it a step further and uh, let Ava's life start to move in somebody's life, hopefully. So uh, we ask as Eric goes through this uh, series of sermons that are on prayer that you all um, keep in regards to what that means and what it could mean to us, what it can mean to you and the true power that it has. Um, and preventative power, restorative power, um, just the amazing tool that we have been given through the gift of power. Or, I'm sorry, through prayer. So please continue to pray for Ava, pray for our family, and pray for all those other children who are currently going through cancer. And I'd like to end with a verse uh, from Psalms. It says, When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Thank you all. Church, will you bow your heads, close your eyes, and, and join me as we pray for Ava Joe, for the Celcitos, and as they had requested for, for others going through this. Let's pray. Uh, God, we do come to you now, Lord, uh, knowing you're sovereign, you are good. Everything what Jake had, had, had proclaimed is truth uh, from your scripture, um, even in the, the valleys, Lord God. Um, God, uh, we, we just take this time uh, with not just individual, but corporate unified prayer, um, asking, Lord, Lord, that in this current season, Lord, um, as hard and as painful as that is, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, Lord, that you continue to, you continue to give a joy, a sweetness, in the sense that comes out of Ava in this time, because as her body is being depleted again physically, Lord, uh, in your grace, she has, uh, she has lived um, to the fullest and with joy. Uh, as uh, Even meeting weekly with Jake uh, in tears as he shares with me how amazed that she as hard as this is, how amazed that she really is uh, normal from what he said. Nothing's normal about this, even physical appearance, everything, uh, what they have to do and, and, and sheltering in place with it. And, and just and she is still just being her normal, joyful, innocent self, Lord God. Uh, I pray that that extends within this season that's toughest chemo wise. And Lord, to the to the very end, uh, God, I, I pray, Lord, right now that you continue to um, give grace in her having no cancer uh, cells in her body. Again, we praise you for that. We thank you for that, Lord. We rejoice in that. And at the same time, as they reminded us, we we also don't want to forget how hard that is still, Lord. Uh, that uh, we praise you for that, but then just kind of forget about it as there are still many long-term effects from this, Lord. And again, the, the mental and the, the spiritual aspect, Lord, of, of uh, what siblings are going through, Jake and Crystal and questioning. And uh, God, again, God, just uh, physical long-term effects that as we rejoice uh, knowing that there is no cancer cells and a great percentage that there it won't come back, Lord. Um, God, we, we still want to keep in mind all those things, Lord, giving you glory no matter what. Um, God, uh, I ask that they continue to put their full weight on you no matter what happens, Lord. Uh, we, Lord, all know and we've came to certain times in our life, certain seasons where we do recognize we are helpless and that you will carry that burden for us, Lord. I ask that as a church, if we can be uh, if we can continue to carry that burden with them, help them, even if it's just a small part, Lord God. 
And we know that you are, again, greater than anything. You're greater than cancer, that you have a promise that is fulfilled in Scripture, that there will be no more sin, consequences of sin, which is death, no more tears and suffering and disease. And so, God, we pray, Lord, that, uh, again, a glimpse of that will come through in this, but that your will at hand, Lord, will serve a greater purpose but that we're still hopeful and anticipating that time and season where we don't have to call out such prayers, Lord. But, but overall, Lord, uh, pray, Lord, that you reveal and show great purpose. Even if that's someone in here that's going through a different type of suffering and hearing and, and realizing, as, as Jake mentioned and asked for prayer with, that there's purpose in that better in purpose and, and that you're good in the midst of it still. Do you use it again for people to grow closer with you, to receive you maybe, Lord, to endure. And God, we do last of all pray for others. We pray for others that are going through this that did not have a solid foundation to stand on. I can't even imagine. Pray, Lord, that others will come to a saving relationship with you to truly know you so that then going through this, Lord, they can have the same worldview and comfort and hope. Uh, we pray for not only other families, Lord, with this, but others, again, in the midst of suffering, that they can be able to have such confidence. So, Lord, we, we give you this time and, and pray these as we come to you to hear now from your word and again the importance and power of prayer in this journey and we pray this all in your name jesus amen well church uh, as i had mentioned the very beginning we're excited as we're in the third week of this series uh, talking about a journey with god and uh, how to walk with him and so uh, last week where we talked about how to be able to listen and then follow those directions that he gives us through his word. Uh, today, Bryce uh, Stockton, who is uh, the East Campus uh, student minister, uh, he's going to be sharing uh, more on uh, uh, the importance and power of prayer on this journey. So, Bryce. Thank you, Eric. I'm not going to preach from the piano, by the way. I'm just going to just want to stand out of the way. Well, hey, good morning, everybody. I'm, I'm so thankful you're here. Um, I just, man. What a sweet morning. I mean, just with the band and, I mean, just with the Salcedo update, I'm just, I'm just encouraged this morning. Um, I'm encouraged. I mean, just looking around, seeing all these faces, seeing these people that love the Salcedos. Um, it's just a privilege to open God's Word with you this morning, and I'm really, really excited. Um, and I got to thinking about it. You know, this honestly, this could be my last Sunday that I'm here um, before you all become an aut autonomous church, and, you know, it makes me a little sad um, because, I, you know, I like coming over here on Sundays. I like you know, the feel that you all have such a home and community. And, and, you know, I love your students over here. You all have some of the best students that, you know, high school, middle school students, I, they're great. I, I told them I might call them out if I see them sleeping. So um, if you hear me say a name, that's what it is. Um, I'm just excited. Um, I'm excited for you all. I'm excited for this journey um, that you're on. Eric is just an incredible pastor, um, such a great mentor to me um, in my time at CPC. I mean, you can see it with how he loves people. Um, he loves you all. So I'm excited for this next um, journey that you all are going in, um, and it's going to be good. So if you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to go ahead and uh, open to Psalm 32, because that's where we're going to be um, in today, um, studying about prayer, the importance of it, the power of it. Um, and, and we're going to continue in our series called the journey of a lifetime, how to walk with God. In the series, it's been so good. It's been practical. Um, it's been helpful. I mean, each week, you know, I, I walk away with something challenging um, and encouraged by. And so that's what I, I hope to do today. I hope to encourage and challenge. And so just to recap, um, our first week, we focused on to walk with God, I must first know God. And again, this is the first step in the process. It's the first step of um, beginning this journey. You know, we cannot begin a journey with God if we don't first know him. And so this is the, the first step in that. And last week we saw to walk with God, I must listen to his directions. You know, and we, we really honed in on, on how we learn God's ways through intentional time in the word. And last week, you know, it was, it was really focusing not just on, on reading our Bibles. Reading our Bibles is good. 
but it's about spending time with the Lord. It's about intentional studying and applying and remembering it in our lives. So today our key focus is this. If you've got your notebooks out, I want you to write this down. To walk with God, I must communicate with him to get instructions. To walk with God, I must communicate with him to get instructions. We all know how important communication is, right? Communication is basically all around us all the time. I mean, from relationships um, to entertainment to news media to social media, um, you know, reading, like even reading, the author's trying to communicate something to you. Right now, I'm trying to communicate something to you, right? Like, we live in this world of communication, and it's even gotten worse with all the calling and the texting and the FaceTiming, right? Like, we just, we, we live in a world of over-communication, and we've seen that, right? We see that. We, we see that in our own lives, and, and we've experienced it in our own lives. And, and it's gotten, you know, so much more with, with technology, with our phones. You know, we have, we have the ability to talk to people all around the world in an instant. Like, no one else in history has been able to do that. Like, you know, we, you know communication is just a driving force in our world. And while, you know, communication is important, you know, it's, you know, it's the world that we live in, it's a good thing, right? Communication in and of itself is a good thing, especially when you're on a journey. Especially when you're on a journey, you, you want to be able to communicate it. For example, let's just say you're to- taking a trip to Florida. The reason why I say that is because I was just there, um, got back on Friday. Let's just say you're taking a trip to Florida, um, and you decide, you know, I'm going to book a plane ticket with this company. So you, you, you go ahead and you book a plane ticket with the company, but the company forgets to communicate with you um, what day you're leaving on, what time you're leaving on, and where you're going. All you know is you're just going to Florida. Wouldn't that be a little stressful, right? Like, wouldn't, wouldn't that be a little stressful? You know, you, they, they forgot to communicate with you, and, and now you're like, oh, man, I've got to plan the rest of my trip with no communication of where I'm going, what I'm doing. You know, you can't book a rental car or a hotel or anything. So what would you be doing? You'd be trying to communicate with them, Right? You'd be trying to, to hear from him. You, you would be trying to, to get to them so you can get your information so you can know where you're going. You don't want to miss anything, right? You would be trying to communicate with them if there was lack of communication on their part. So here's the point. Communication is key on a journey. Communication is key on a journey. I mean, with that company that booked the plane ticket, you'd be so frustrated. I mean, I can only imagine, like, what I would be doing. But you would be frustrated, And that's what we need to understand. In order to walk with God, in order to be on the journey, I must communicate with him to get instructions. You know, if you want to be on this journey of a lifetime with God, you should and want to communicate with him. That's big. You should want to and you should communicate with him. And I think that's exactly what we're going to see from Psalm 32 this morning. So listen, let's read our text and and, and really just unpack it. And understand what God is trying to say to us today. So here's Psalm 32, starting in verse 1. It says, Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and whose spirit there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which might be curved with bit and brittle or will not stay near you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, thank you so much for your word. God, we, we know you better by your word, but God, we need to understand it. God, we truly need to understand it. So God, I just ask that, that our hearts will be open to you this morning. 
God, that we'll get rid of the distractions that are going on in our lives, that we won't focus on them right now, but God, we'll just focus on what you have to say to us. God, take this time to reveal things to us. Show us where we fall short. Show us where we could live for you better. And God, during this time, show us how to better communicate with you. God, we thank you for this time. Use it now in our own lives. It's in your son's name I pray. Amen. All right, so the first thing I want you to see from our text is I want you to see that communication is the lifeblood of any relationship. Communication is the lifeblood of any relationship. And so as someone who works with students, I'll often use this illustration with them to to point out the, the power, the importance of prayer. I'll say to them, let's say me and you have a friendship. We have a friendship, right? You know, we're friends. We like hanging out. We spend time together. But one day I stop talking to you. One day I just, I just quit talking to you. You know, you still call me. You still text me. You know, you still try to FaceTime me. But, you know, you just hear nothing from me. I stop talking. If that's the case, this is what I ask them. So if that's the case, how good is our friendship? And oftentimes they'll look at me and they'll be like, well, not very good, right? It's not very good because you're only talk- like, I'm only talking and you're not talking at all. And that's, and that's key. You know, only one person is talking. You know, if I'm not saying anything, if I'm not responding, you might think I'm mad, you know, disinterested, that I don't like you. You know, our, our friendship, it's not going to grow or develop. That's what I try to communicate with them. If there's only one of us talking, our friendship, it's not going to grow or develop. There's no intentionality to it. Like, I, you, you know, I know a lot about you, but you don't know a lot about me, right? That's the point we're trying to get. So if anything, the, the relationship, it just gets worse as time goes on, right? If only one person is talking, the communication or the, the relationship, it will just get worse. And I, and I tell this to students all the time, and, and, and it's just a good reminder of, of why communication is important. Because here's the thing, without communication, a relationship ceases to exist. Without communication, a relationship ceases to exist. And this is what David says in verses 3 and 4. If you go back and look at them, David says, starting in verse 3, he says, For when I kept silent, when I kept silent, David says, listen, there was not a relationship going on. Our relationship or my relationship with God wasn't going well because I was keeping silent. You know, I'd stopped communicating with God. And it's amazing because David describes the effects of this. Look at, look at continuing on in verse 3. He says, you know, for when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. David says, God, when I stopped communicating with you, when I stopped talking to you, my bones wasted away. They wasted away. And I'm not a doctor, but aren't bones like the strongest structure in the body? Right? Like, aren't they the thing that, that holds us upright and keeps us, you know, going and, and walking and like all these things? Like, I'm not a doctor, so don't quote me on any of that, but I, I think they're the strongest bones in the, or the strongest structure in the body. And so David is saying, you know, when I am silent, when I don't communicate with God, the consequences are huge. It's like my bones are wasting away. And if you're on a journey, you don't want your bones wasting away. If you're on a journey, you don't want them to be wasting away. You want them to be strong, right? Like you wouldn't think about taking a journey if you have two broken legs. Like you're not going to be like, oh, I'll go hiking today with two broken legs. It just doesn't make sense. You know, that's not the ideal time to take a journey. So David, that's what he communicates. Listen, when we stop talking with God, it's like my bones are wasting away. And in this psalm, David, he's experiencing extreme guilt. You know, so much guilt that he doesn't want to confess to God. That's why he kept silent. He was experiencing just such extreme guilt that he just decided to keep it in. But listen, communication is the lifeblood of any relationship. It's the lifeblood. It's what gives it life, right? Like, that's what it is. And so here's my question to you. What does your relationship with God look like in your life right now? In your life, What does your relationship with God look like? Maybe you're in here today and your relationship with God's going well. You know, maybe maybe you have this constant communication with him. That's awesome. That's so great. Like, keep that up, right? Like, keep doing that. Keep, Keep communicating with God. That's awesome. 
Or maybe you feel like David. Maybe you're in here today and you feel like David. Maybe you haven't spoken to God recently. Maybe some things have gone on in life and you just haven't spoken to him. Maybe it's been a couple of days. You know, maybe you're ashamed of some sin you're holding on to or, or your schedule, you know, it just seems so busy. But let me ask you, what's holding you back? What's holding you back? If, if, if communication is the lifeblood of your relationship with God, what is holding you back? That's what I want to ask. You know, that's why I want to ask it because it is the lifeblood. You know, maybe your relationship with God's going well because you're not communicating. Maybe you're in here and you don't have a relationship with God. Maybe this is your first time in church or you're just trying to figure out this whole God thing. If that's the case, let me just say thanks for coming. Thank you for being here. We love having you here. It's such a great opportunity to have you here. But let me just say this, that the relationship with God is the most important thing in your life. It's the most important thing. See, you, you, you need a relationship before the communication can happen. That's, that's big. You need the relationship before the communication can happen. And so let me just explain how you can have a relationship with God. It's first, you just recognize you're a sinner. It shouldn't be too hard to do. All of us in here have, have sinned in our lives. We, it's, it's not hard. We live in a world that's full of sin and corruption. We see that all around in our lives with, with all that's going on. You know, we, we've lied. We've cheated. You know, we've all done these things. We live in a world full of sin. And so for you, it's you just recognize you're a sinner. And secondly, you recognize that your sin brings penalty. It brings a penalty. And that penalty for sin is separation from God forever. That's big. Separation from God forever. It's spending eternity away from God in hell. And honestly, that's what each one of us deserves. Everybody in here, we all deserve that. That's what our sin produces But God didn't want that for us. God, he's such a good and gracious God. You know, we sung about earlier, he's so good. And and he didn't want that for us. So instead, he sends his son to die on the cross for your sins, my sins, the world's sins. Jesus, he lives his perfect and holy life. And he becomes the holy and blameless sacrifice for us. You know, he took the wrath of God on himself so that we could have a relationship with him. And we can't earn this relationship. Scripture makes that very clear in Romans 10. It says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's all you have to do. You have to confess, believe, and invite him in. And if you do that, you have a relationship with him. That's great. And then you can start having that communication. So for all of us in here, I want to ask again, What does your relationship with God look like in your life? Right now, think about it in your mind. What does it look like? Because you need to understand where you're at in order to get where you're going. That's what being on a journey is about. So what does your relationship with God look like? And this is important because the next point is very clear. I must have an organized, habitual prayer life in order to walk with God. I must have an organized, habitual prayer life in order to walk with God. Recognize that this doesn't just say you need to have a prayer life. Having a prayer life is good. But there's an emphasis on the organized and habitual. You know, if you're going on a journey and you aren't organized, what might happen? Well, you might get lost, right? You don't have directions. You could get lost. You, you know, you, you could forget something super important, right? Like you could, you could, many things could go wrong on a journey if there's not organization to it. And so if we're on a journey with God, it's, it's important for us to be organized. At the same time, you know, our prayer life, it, it needs to be habitual. You know, it needs to be something that's planned in our calendars, It doesn't need to be something we just do because, oh, we know we're supposed to do it. Like, it needs to be planned. Like, we need to carve time out of it. So we make time for the things that are important to us. We absolutely make time for the things that are important to us. So our prayer life, you know, it needs to be on that list. I mean, look back at verse 8 with me. It says, this is what what the psalmist writes. This is what David writes. He says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you. With my eye upon you. Listen, having an organized and habitual prayer life, it's God's way to instruct and to teach us. 
It's God's way to, to give us direction on this journey that we're on. You know, and, and honestly, I feel like that should be enough for us to, you know, enough reason for us to pray. But I want to give you a couple more reasons. I want to give you some reasons to, to pray, you know, you know, why we must pray. Because I think it's important. I think it's important to see, you know, the examples of Scripture of why we should pray. First, it's a sin not to. When you look at 1 Samuel 12, it shows us this. Look at, look at what it says. It says, Moreover, as for, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you. And I will instruct you in the good and right way. That's what it's communicating with us. You know, that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you. It's a sin not to pray, which is huge. Secondly, it's God's way of giving us our needs. It's God's way of giving us our needs. Look at James 4 right here. It says, you do not have because you do not ask. You do not have because you do not ask. That's huge, right? That's important. It's God's way of giving us our needs. That's why we need prayer in our life. Third thing, it's God's way of helping us overcome worry. It's God's way of helping us overcome worry worry. 1 Peter 5 says, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. You cast your anxieties on him because he cares for you. This is huge, right? And number four, it unlocks the storehouses of God's blessings and power. I love Jeremiah 33 here. It says, call to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. I mean, I, I was thinking about this verse as the Salcedos were talking. You know, they're like, you know, we've thought about the worst. We've thought about the best. Like, that, that's what they were communicating. And this is what they're doing. This is what they're doing with Jeremiah 33. They're calling to the Lord. And, and the Lord is going to answer them. That's what he says in verse 3 right there, right? He says, call to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. And that verse, it just so connects with, with the Salcedos right now. But listen, it unlocks the storehouses of God's blessings and power. That's what prayer can do. It can do each of those things. And each of those four things are impre- incredible. There's, and there's tons of more. You go read scripture, you can see them. There's, there's tons of more. But I really wanted to just share with you those four. But listen, I think there's another big concept we need to understand. And it's this. Sin will stop my prayer or my prayer will stop my sin. Sin will stop my prayer or prayer will stop my sin. You think about this like a scale, right? If sin's on one side and my prayer's on another, if the sin goes up, my prayer will decrease. And the flip, is, flip side is true, right? If my, if my prayer is up, my sin will go down. It's like a scale. If my prayer increases, my sin will decrease. And we see this in several different places. But if you look at John 9, it says it right here. It says, We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. There's a huge distinction right there. Or Psalm 66, 18 says, if I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. Listen, there's two big points there. If you have a relationship with God, sin will hinder your prayer life. It will absolutely hinder your prayer life. And at the same time, in order to communicate with God, you must first have a relationship with him. That's what we see in John 9. It says, we know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. But listen, sin will stop or it will hinder our prayer life. It's huge. But there's a positive side to this. Look back in, in verse 1 and 2 and verse 5 with me real quick in Psalm 32. Listen, listen to what it says. It says, Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and whose spirit there is no deceit. And then jumping to verse 5, I acknowledge my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Listen, prayer, it can stop our sin. All right, we call out to God in, in moments of temptation and weakness, and it can stop it. 
Because we're trusting in his power and who he is, not on what we can do. Sin will either stop your prayer life or, or your prayer life will stop your sin. And so we know the importance of prayer, right? Each one of us, each, you know, the four points that were made, you know, it, it makes sense, right? It makes sense why we should pray. It should make sense why we should pray on our journey with God. So why do we not do it? Why do we not do it? Like we know that, that prayer is important. We know it's powerful. But why do we not take time for it? Let me give you four reasons why I think we don't take time for it. Let me give you four things that I think can be obstacles to your prayer life. First one is just bitterness. Bitterness. And this can be against people or against God. It could be against people or against God. You know, you could be bitter because things aren't going as you planned them. Notice as you planned them. That's big right there. You know, things aren't going as way I planned them. And so now I'm upset and I don't want to pray because they're not going the way that I planned them. You know, it's bitterness. It could be thinking that God doesn't want us to be happy. You know, that, that, that thought that, you know, God doesn't want me to be happy. I've sinned too much in my life. It doesn't, he doesn't want me to be happy, so I'm going to be bitter, right? I'm not going to pray to him. Bitterness is a big one. Second is busyness. Busyness. As we live in a world full of overcommunication, we also live in a world full of busyness, right? We've all got things to do. We all got jobs. We all got extracurricular activities. We've got hobbies, right? We've got all of these things. You know, we pack our schedules all the time with things to do, and we don't even think about prayer. You know, we might think about it, oh, when we go to sleep at night. You know, that's like the only time we, we think about it. But busyness can be one of those things that is an obstacle for our prayer life. Third is blessings, and I know this, this seems like a weird one to put as an obstacle, right? Like, why would you put blessings on here? But I put it on there because it's either because we, we don't get the blessings we think we deserve or we take them for granted. Maybe God has been very gracious to you. Maybe he's given you a ton of blessings, you know, a great family. He's just, you know, giving you wealth. Like, maybe he's just really blessed your life. And you just take them for granted. Don't even thank him for it. Or maybe you're thinking, God, you know, you haven't blessed me enough. I deserve more because I've served you better. I've done more things for your kingdom. God, you should bless me more. Right? Like that's, those things can, those thoughts, those ideas, can, they can be a hindrance, an obstacle. And, you know, this blessings, it's, it's ultimately a lack of dependence on God. It's either not thanking him for what you have or, or thinking you deserve more. It's a, it's a lack of dependence. And the last one is boredom. It's boredom. You know, we don't pray because we're just bored with it. We don't think God's hearing us. We don't think that when we call out to him that it's actually a good thing. It's like, it's like we spend time in prayer, but we think about all the other things that are going on in our schedule or, or what else we could be doing, right? It's boredom. It's, it's having this idea that it's, it's not fun. Listen, all of these things, all of these can be hindrances. They can be obstacles to your prayer life. But listen, we have to remember the importance of it. If we want to be on a journey with God, if we want to walk in, in the journey of a lifetime, we have to be communicating with him. Listen, Satan does not want you to pray to God. Because when you are not praying, you're saying, I can do this journey on my own. I can do this journey on my own. It's, I can figure it out. I can do it. And so Satan is winning the battle when we are not taking time to pray to the Lord. Listen, we want to be on a journey of a lifetime. But it starts with the communication. It's key. So the last thing we see from our text today is I must make enough quiet time to truly communicate with God. I must make enough quiet time to truly communicate with God. Look at verse 7 in Psalm 32. It says, you are, my, you are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. David, he describes God as his hiding place, right? The place where he finds shelter, where he finds rest. When you think about it, if you're playing hide and seek, maybe with friends or your kids, how do you hide? 
you hide out in the open, you know, where everybody can find you screaming and waving around? No, of course not, right? That would be dumb. No, you try to find the best spot possible where you can find shelter, where you can, you know, not be found, right? You try to be as quiet as possible. So listen, when we are trying to make intentional time with God, do not go somewhere where it's noisy, where it's loud, where it's busy, where there's distractions, right? You know, and find, instead, you know, you find a quiet place, somewhere quiet where you can truly get along with, get, get alone with God. Like, like verse seven there, it says, you know, you are my hiding place. You know, find that hiding place. Find that place where you can spend intentional time with God. You know, get rid of the electronics, put them away. Jesus, he's the best example of this, right? In scripture, all throughout the life of Jesus, you just see him going off to a desolate place to pray. And look what he says in Matthew 6. I think this is huge. He says, but when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. He'll reward you. Listen, that is how Jesus is instructing us to pray. That's not my words. That's Jesus's words, right? Like, Go into your room, shut the door, and pray. Like, get rid of the distractions. Find the hiding place. I want to tell you all about an experience I had one time. I uh, I took a class at Southern, and it was called Personal Spiritual Disciplines. And so in it, you know, we learned about reading the Bible and praying and fasting and all, all the different spiritual disciplines. And so in our class, you know, we're encouraged to do these things. We're encouraged to, to you know, and, and challenged to, you know, spend time in the Word, pray, and, and things like that. And so I'm, I'm reading through the syllabus, and one of my final assignments for class was to spend four hours in silence with nothing but a Bible. Four hours, okay? I'm sitting here, and I'm reading the syllabus, and I'm thinking, oh, my goodness. Like, I'm, I'm going to die. Like, you know, I'm going to die. Like, there's, there's, I can't be in silence for four hours. You know, for introverts, it sounds like the best day in the world, right? But for an extrovert like me, I was thinking four hours in silence is going to be super difficult. And so I remember, I, I remember the, the, the one thing I could do was I was challenged to read the book of Proverbs in my four hours. Read the whole book of Proverbs and spend four hours in silence was my assignment. And I just remember thinking, oh man, this is going to be tough. But listen, it was actually one of the best assignments I ever had in all of school. It was, it was so cool because, you know, it, it's, it's just... Like, I would never think to do it. I don't know why. Like, I would never think to spend four hours, but I got rid of all the electronics. I got somewhere where nobody could find me. Like, I was completely alone, and it was amazing. It was truly amazing because God, he just revealed so much about himself, so much about, you know, who he is, things that I need to work on in my life. He revealed so much when I just got alone with him, when I, when I found him as his hiding place. I mean, seriously, I look back on that assignment and I think, wow, what a joy. Like, what a joy that was. So I'm not saying to you, you know, you need to carve four hours out of each day um, to spend alone with God. But what would it look like if you carved 30 minutes out of your day to truly just be in silence, no distractions? Or what would it look like if you, if you did it for an hour? If you could do it for an hour, it would be amazing. Because here's the thing, I know that, that when we do this, when we spend a long time with God, when we pray to him, the journey gets better. You're going to learn so much about yourself, so much about God, if we'll just take the time to communicate. Again, it goes both ways. When we're reading the Bible, it's like we're just talking, or it's like he's just talking to us. When we're praying, we get an opportunity to talk back to him. Listen, prayer, it's such an important step in this journey communication, it's, it's key, right? A good relationship has communication from both sides. So how, this is how I want to end today. I want to end with a challenge. So I'm going to show you a prayer method, one that maybe some of you have known for a while. Maybe you do it in your own life. That's great. I'm going to show you a prayer method, and I'm going to challenge you to do it for 21 days. The reason I picked 21 is because it takes 21 days to form a habit, right? We need a, an organized, habitual prayer life. And so this method will help you be organized. And I'm going to challenge you to do it for 21 days so that you can make it a habit in your life. And so what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to take out your point. You know, the thing that Eric showed you earlier, it's got the QR code on it. 
If you get out the point, you scan the QR code, and if you're up for the challenge, I want you to just write, I'm taking the challenge. Simple as that. I just want you to say, I'm taking the challenge, and, and, and we get to see it tomorrow. And the reason why I want to see it is just so me and Eric can pray for you tomorrow. We just want to take time to pray for you. And so if you would, we would love to be able to pray for you. But here's the method. Here's the method. It's simple. It's called the Acts method. Again, many of you have probably heard this before. I love this method. It's, it's one of my favorites. Here's what it stands for. First is adoration. Adoration. It's just about adoring God. It's about taking the, the first part of your prayer and just adoring God for his creation. I mean, look at how beautiful all this is outside with the grass and the trees. It's just adoring God for who he is. C is for confession. It's time to repent. Time to, time to take, you know, your, your cares and your anxieties to him, right? It's about casting them on him. It's about confessing the sin that is in your life. T is for thanksgiving. It's about thanking God for, for all that he's given you. You know, the, the blessings that you have in your life, right? It's just thanking him. And S is a supplication. It's sharing my needs. That's what supplication means. It means sharing my needs. And I love that the S is the very last thing because you're doing all the other three before you even get to yourself. You know, you're, you're, you're praising God and you're thanking him for all you have. And then you get to share your needs. You share with him. So my challenge to you is over the next 21 days is to do this prayer method. It's to just take time. I want to be able to help you in this journey. I want you to be able to walk with God. So, you know, take this prayer method, use it. And, and if you would, I would love to be able to pray for you. If you could turn that in, that'd be awesome. So what I want to do right now is I just want to pray to end our sermon. And I'm actually going to use the Acts method in our prayer. Just as a way to, to communicate just the importance of prayer, how big it is in our lives. So let's go to the Lord in prayer now. God, thank you for this morning. God, we adore you. God, you, when we look at your creation, when we look at your beauty, God, it's amazing. It's amazing what you've given us, the sun, the moon, the stars, the world, the oxygen that we live, that we, we use to breathe. God, we, we adore you. You're a good and a gracious God. Thank you for loving us. God, we, we, we don't deserve to know you, but God, we're thankful for it. And God, we, we want to confess God, we, we all have sin in our lives. Something that that's, we, we know, we feel. God, we want to confess it to you. God, we want to pour it out to you. We, wanna, we want you to transform our hearts. So God, let us confess our sins. We know we don't deserve forgiveness, but we thank you that you give it. And God, we do want to thank you today. Thank you for bringing us here. Thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for, for all the many blessings that we have, a, a building to meet in and, and people here. God, what a blessing it is to have relationships. God, it's just so good. Thank you for all that you've given us. And God, we just ask for you to move, for you to move in our lives. As we continue this journey, God, show us where we need to step. Show us where we fall short. Show us where we need to be better. And God, show us the way in which we should go. God, for West Campus in general, I pray that you will continue to build them up. So that over this next year, as they become an autonomous church, God, I pray that, that the gospel goes out, that they're thriving in this community. God, I pray for Ava Jo, the sweet little girl. God, I pray that you will continue to heal her. God, just what a blessing the Salcedos are. So God, be with them. God, be with us. Show us where we need to love you more. Thank you for this journey. It's in your son's name I pray. Amen. Would you stand and sing with us? Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. His love for me, oh, His love for me, whom the sun sets free, oh, is free and deep. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. Free at last, He has. 
thank you for who you are. We praise you for who you are. Thank you for the church. Thank you for the word we got to hear this morning. I pray that we'd be intentional about keeping our communication with you um, throughout this week, that we would be intentional and faithful in prayer. Pray over our offering. Pray that we give joyfully um, out of what you've given us, that we'd have a thankful and joyful heart. Um, we love you and we trust you. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Jacqueline. And thank you, Amber and Brad. You guys did, again, a great job leading us this morning. Uh, we'll church in a moment here. Uh, before you dismiss, I wanted to share a few more things and then also pray uh, about one more thing. Uh, it, oh, by the way, when you're walking out, we're, again, trying to limit some things uh, with multiple touches. And so offering baskets that Jacqueline just got done praying about uh, are the wicker baskets at all three exit doors. And so you can be able to drop off a tithe. Um, and uh, also for the city uh, in those baskets. Well, church, uh, first off, uh, um, inside your point, there's a couple things just want to direct your attention to. First off, in three weeks from now, we're going to be celebrating our seventh birthday as a campus church. Seventh birthday, and uh, we're going to be doing so in, in many ways. First off, of course, we're going to be celebrating through baptisms. And listen, we don't have to drag a 400-pound baptismal this time, okay? We got our own built-in one, and listen, it's deep. If you... If if any kids are being baptized, I am undertaker choke slamming them, okay? To be able to like lift them up, it, it's deep, but it's gonna be fun, okay? And again, we are going to celebrate though, of course, we haven't been able to do baptism since COVID hit almost the beginning of the year. And so we're excited to do so, and especially in this building. Um, and so again, uh, if that is any of you or maybe any of your children, if you know you have a relationship with Jesus, but you've never taken that next steps to show the world who you are in Christ and to be obedient to him, we would love to choke slam. I mean, baptize you, okay? And again, it's going to be a celebration for our birthday with that. So um, if, again, um, you're interested in that, again, scan that barcode right there and just share. I'd like to talk more about baptism, find out maybe more information, or I'm in, and then I'd love to talk to you about your testimony and, uh, again, make that happen for you guys. Also, it's going to be around that time, church. Uh, be excited for this, but it'll be around that time that we're going to be sharing uh, our, our mission, our vision, uh, and our church name with you all uh, going into the new year. So, again, Again, don't miss that. That's going to be coming up in three weeks. Um, also, the Wednesday before that, on uh, Wednesday, October 14th, we will not be having student ministry, Kids Connect, or Adult Connect groups on Wednesday um, because we're going to be combining with East for Awaken. Uh, today, we heard the importance and power of prayer, and we want to spend some time worshiping the Lord and then praying together on that Wednesday. Again, this is organized. This is habitual. We've had this in our calendar. Do this every single semester and pause everything for that week so we can come together to pray and some of the things that we're going to be praying about on that Sunday is the stuff that we're going to be talking about next week because next week if you've been a part of Center Point for a while or if you're new know that on October we always have a missions month and so what we're doing next week we're going to be sharing with you um, our financial goals and uh, projects that we will be giving to um, uh, across the world uh, usually that's uh, uh, with one specific country and a couple different ministries and so our mission team has been working hard these last four or five months praying about where we're going to be giving to. Um, so each Sunday in October, we're going to be talking about those different ministries and that country leading up to the final Sunday of October when we'll have a special offering toward that. And church, again, this is part of our heart as a church. Uh, no matter what, we want to think beyond ourselves and participate in the Great Commission, not just locally, but again, across the world. And so we do that by our giving each week, but especially in October with the different things we're going to be describing. So we're really excited about that. Uh, in fact, we usually kick that off, of course, the first of October, but the reason why I'm sharing so so much about it is because we also have prayer calendars for that um, each year when we do that we usually give you that calendar and it's like the third or fourth day and we've had several people who's like well I missed prayer for the first couple of days We're like well you can make up for that but here's the calendar anyways before we start that so um, I know Ricardo uh, and his uh, lovely daughter was able to pass out some to you uh, when you walked in but they're also on the info table um, right in the back uh, also in the hallway and I think 
they're going to be passing that as well. So feel free to grab one, and so you can be praying with us for that entire month of October. Well, church, before you do leave, I'm going to ask uh, uh, for the curse to be able to make their way up here, and uh, I want to, uh, again, uh, spend some time as a church to be uh, uh, to pray for them uh, as we view uh, their transition going back to Elizabethtown, Kentucky, uh, as a uh, commissioning and ascending out in that way. And uh, before we talk about that and pray about that here in a moment, uh, I also want to uh, um, just be able to give them a, a gift. Again, Courtney, Jacob, you guys have been a gift to our church uh, this year. Uh, there was great, great purpose. I know when you guys originally came here, um, taking your, your position with the uh, the hospital and God aligning that where you would help serve our church, um, you didn't know what was in store. Uh, a newly married, now a uh, new uh, mom and dad, and uh, again, there is great, great purpose over this last year. I don't know how we would have survived, uh, honestly, without you two uh, when it comes to some of the online stuff that we were doing and even a little bit transition into this church. And so again, we're so grateful for your service grateful for this next year. You've been a gift to our church, and uh, not only do we recognize that, but we want to gift you as well. Now listen, I was very, very tempted to just get like one really big gift card to one like big nice place, but if you know anything about Jacob Kerr, I've never met a person that has eaten as much Taco Bell as this guy right here, okay? I, I'm, I'm serious when I say that. I do not know, one, how this guy's so skinny still. Um, no, number two, how he can be able to survive that um, with your digestive system. Um, but every Monday, as soon as we're finished with staff meeting, we're asking about, oh, where should we go? No question, Taco Bell every single time, okay? So, uh, yes, most times, okay? Um, so, um, the uh, Cheesecake Factory is for you, okay? Um, <laughs> And, and th not saying that you guys have to go separate or anything, but she may not like Taco Bell as much as you. But um, uh, again, uh, and that's also just in case if they don't have a Cheesecake Factory in Elizabethtown, it forces you to come back to Lexington, oh. okay? And so uh, Cheesecake Factory for you, and you, my friend, get the Taco Bell gift card, okay? Um, but will you, church, join me in, in prayer for this sweet, sweet couple, their family, again, as they've made that transition to Elizabethtown and how God's going to use them to have that same purpose that he had over here, and now even more as they've been obedient to God's call with that, uh, with their role as, as, as a couple, married couple, uh, as, as new parents, uh, but then beyond that as well as he has purpose for that community and mission in there. So let's pray for them right now. Jesus. Thank you so much for Jacob, for, for Courtney Kerr, uh, Lord, for their beautiful daughter, Lord, this sweet, sweet family, Lord, that they were able to be able to have so many new beginnings um, here in Lexington, Lord, uh, again, freshly in their marriage. Uh, as they uh, be became parents, as you gifted them with that role, uh, it changed so much for the good of their relationship with you, but then also uh, future Lord God. And uh, Lord, as they have been obedient to that embracing of those roles, Lord God, and then even when it comes to this move going back town, uh, to their, their hometown where their families are from, Lord God, Lord, you are going to use them greatly and bring so much fruit in that obedience, Lord. I pray, Lord, in their local church, Lord, again, that you will use them, Lord. Um, Lord, that their example and testimony, Lord, uh, to their service will be used uh, greatly, just like it was used here. And uh, God, I ask, Lord, that again, you send them out as a missionaries as well, Lord, that they are going to be, Lord, uh, even at their home, Lord, um, ha having, having a home that's uh, centered around the gospel uh, so that their daughter can be exposed to that. Uh, uh, God, we pray that she will receive that and even be sent out as an arrow in the psalm, says Lord God, uh, with that. And God, um, we pray, Lord, and know that you're sending these two as arrows back to Elizabethtown. And we pray, Lord, that you're going to use them in the life of others, Lord, uh, when it comes to vocation, when it comes to uh, the places that you will send them, uh, that they will just habitually be at. Again, that you will use them in mission in all those ways. God, I praise you. And again, thank you, Lord, for this year that we've been able to have with this sweet family, how much they use them in the life of our church, and especially um, for us when it comes to next steps, Lord. Uh, again, uh, uh, there's so many things that, that we would not uh, be where we are as a church and done some of the things if it wasn't for them, and we're grateful for you, Lord, and excited for their future, Lord. And so, God, we thank you again. We pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, guys. And thank you, guys. Love you guys. We will see you guys next week. Take this.